Welcome to a Council of Black Belts. I'm Shihan Scotty Phillips. I hold the current ranking of 7th Dawn in the style of Aitaru Jiu-Jitsu, and I will be the moderator for this episode, Feel Your Piety. What is a Council of Black Belts? It is simply what the name implies, a group of black belts from various martial arts styles coming together to openly discuss various topics in and around the martial arts. In addition, it's an open and honest discussion, not only in martial arts studies, and or instruction, but how to incorporate the martial arts in one's daily life. Our topic of discussion is filia piety. Filia piety, also called filia duty, is a term used to describe a person's sense of duty towards members of their own family, and in particular, the child-parent obligation. Dictionary.com explains filia generally means relating to a son or daughter or concerning a parent-child relationship, while piety is a dutiful respect. Together, filial piety refers to a child's service towards their parent as well as other older extended relatives. Filial piety is associated with the ancient teachings of Confucius, 551 to 479 BC. Confucianism, a system of ethics, education, and statesmanship, stresses humanity, ancestral worship, reverence for parents, and harmony in thought and conduct. Filial piety is a core virtue and related to the principle of Ren. Ren, which means humanity or benevolence. Thus, filial piety is more than just obeying your parents or taking care of them when they are older. It must also involve consulting your elders at advice and permission, putting one's needs second, and being a positive representative of your family everywhere you go. Filial piety is often developed in Chinese-inspired stories. An example comes from the 1998 Disney film Mulan. The main character, Mulan, becomes a warrior, so her father does not have to, out of filial piety. Dictionary.com states filial piety is not just an ancient doctrine, as it greatly influences generations of Chinese families today. It is evolving to a value, more reciprocal, emotive relationship between generations. To the Japanese, filial piety basically describes the correct way to act towards one's parents. Francis L. K. Hush states in his article, Filial Piety in Japan. It includes factors such as obeying, being respectful, polite, loyal, considerate, dutiful and helpful towards one's parents. Filial piety is thought of as a foundation of moral conduct that established a secure family and conscious member of society. Every adult was taken care of by his or her children, so no one would be uncared for. One of the most important aspects of filial piety is to have a good relationship with your family and elders. In the martial arts, the nature of family is very strong, with senior belts as well as instructors looked at as elders, and the grandmasters and or founders of a particular style as ancestors. Thus, filial piety is a strong moral code and character trait for a martial artist to have as well as demonstrate. John D. Rockefeller Jr. once said, we must instill a sense of duty in our children. Every right implies responsibility, every opportunity, an obligation, every possession a duty. The panel is now open for discussion. What are your thoughts and or experiences with filial piety? Please feel, to share, feel free to share your thoughts as well as additional topics you would like to see discussed. If you're interested in being a part of a Council of Black Belts, please let me know. I look forward to hearing from you. Reach out to me via email, idaru1982 at gmail.com. That's A-I-D-O-R-Y-U 1982 at gmail.com. I'm pleased to share additional thoughts on today's topic from Grandmaster Richard Hackworth, Chief Executive Officer, American Dragon Martial Arts Homeschool, located in Ochea, Florida. Grandmaster Hackworth shares his thoughts with us on filial piety. He writes, filia obligation or piety, as previously discussed, is the idea that children owe a debt or obligation to defer to parental wishes and to meet the parents' needs. 
Filial piety is a central tenet of Confucianism and involves taking care of and being good to one's parents and exhibiting respect, love, courtesy, support, reverence, and loyalty to them. This concept, by extension, also applies to the relationships between master and disciples in the martial arts. According to debt theory, one owes repayment for whatever investment or resources has been made on their behalf, regardless of the giver's needs or the receiver's ability to repay. In other words, children have specific obligations to their parents and must repay their parents' investments in rearing them. The rationale is that parents contribute resources to raising their children, including time, money, energy, and so on. Each of these resources could have been devoted to something other than raising the child. Consequently, the parent has fewer resources than he or she would otherwise have. Therefore, the child owes repayment for this debt. Again, the same can be considered true for a martial arts instructor and his or her students. However, unlike true creditor-debt relationship, in filial piety, neither the teacher's needs nor the student's ability to respond determine the content of the obligation. The student owes repayment regardless of his or her ability to repay the loan, and regardless of whether the teacher needs or asks to be repaid. Just as a debtor's obligation of repayment is not contingent on current, ongoing, and mutual beneficial relationship, the student owes repayment regardless of the nature of his current relationship with his instructor. Filia obligations arise from and are determined by the teacher's investment in educating their student. The concept of filial piety dictates obedience, devotion, care, and demonstrating it every day is an essential predicate for fulfilling that obligation. It certainly is a basic element in the relationship between the martial artist master and the student. The Chinese character for human is one single line leaning against the other. This is to symbolize that humans cannot stand alone. Once an animal grows up, it forgets its family because it lives a total, totally independent life. Humans, on the other hand, need constant care and attention for many years, and the parents must accept this responsibility. This is the natural order of things. The purpose of this type of filial relationship is to teach humans to understand the idea of interdependence so necessary for the species to survive. Because of the nature of the relationship between teacher and student, martial arts participants must all have such filial filial piety. Just as a parent should give everything to ensure the success of their child, so such filial piety benefits the martial arts. This, of course, may not be in terms of financial or material well-being, but it should be in terms of education and instructor and parts and the concepts they teach their students regarding humanity and morality. If it were not for your instructor, you would not have the skills you possess. Think about who struggle to teach you and never disobey or disparage your instructor. Never blame your instructor for your own failings. If you follow their teachings in good manner, you will never lead a bad life. All a true master wants for the student is a better life. Students also need to remember that they must always be a model for those who follow them. Someday the student will be the master and others will follow his or her example. If you treat your martial arts master well, then your students will learn to treat you well. Your students will learn everything you did. You can even envision your own memories in the movements and lives of your students. That is why in life, martial arts instructors must include morality, loyalty, and filial piety. The relationship between a martial arts instructor and his or her students is in sense the same as that of a parent and child. The way a parent instructs the child in the way of human morality is the same way a martial arts instructor should teach their students. Because the instructor is teaching dangerous skills, a relationship must be maintained in which the instructor is like a parent and the student like the child. An instructor and a student cannot be friends, just as father and son cannot be friends. We must maintain the proper relationship, respect, and feel your duties that our positions dictate. In essence, it is a two-way street, parent to child, child to parent, master to student, student to master. That way, an honorable martial art can be passed down from generation to generation, 
just as the family name and its traditions are passed on through time. Thank you, Grandmaster Hackworth. Thank you all for your time today. and look forward to seeing you next month.